Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about players I'm going to buy or sell at this point in the fantasy season. But first, like, what is Prize Picks doing sitting here double cheeked up on a Wednesday with Steph Curry at 0.5? You don't need to, I know this is a football video. This is a fantasy football video. You don't need to know basketball to go hit this free square. Literally, Steph Curry, 0.5 points on Prize Picks. It'll be there for, I believe, the next week. Okay. So if you guys have been playing Prize Picks with us all season, great. You just have some free money sitting there on the app for you. If you are new to Prize Picks, go download the app or the, go onto the website. We have that linked in the description. Okay. And if you're a first time depositor, put anywhere from $10 to $100 and use promo code BDGE. Use code BDGE. They're going to match whatever you deposit. So if you put down 10, you're going to get 20 on your account. And then you could throw the 20 onto the Steph Curry. Point five points for this week. Free square. They don't do this often, but they want you to come play and have fun. We're going to be giving out picks all season long, so make sure you hit that right now. Prize picks. Promo code BDGE. Steph Curry. Free. Fucking square. Point five. All right. Let's talk some fantasy football. Y'all know we got to tuck our shirts in. We're getting to the point of the season where we know a lot about players, we know a lot about depth charts, we know a lot about talent, we know a lot about surrounding situations, but more importantly, we're starting to get a feel for uh, the defenses in the NFL. So we know, you know, a lot of people do the strength of schedule stuff during the offseason, during the summer, and it feels like a waste of time because you never, like, defenses that are number seven in the previous year are going to be 17, but it just, it feels like a lot of pointless words and, and uh, breaths being breathed. Okay. And we're wasting our fucking time, but we are no longer doing that. So we're going to look at a bunch of players that I think you should either sell or buy. We actually only have one buy on this uh, video, I believe based on like end of season schedules. When you get to the playoffs, uh, they're just not guys that you're going to be tempted to throw into your lineup, although they might have some big name appeal attached to them. So the first player I want to put on this list that we are going to sell is Mr. DK Metcalf. Like, I don't want you to forget about the first three weeks of season when he had 36, 35, and 64 yards. I'm not going to say he was unusable, but he was bad. And we're like, fuck, this is what we thought the Seattle offense was going to be. Then he had a 149-yard game in week four against the NFL's worst defense in Detroit, right? And I get it. Geno looks great. Geno looks great. But let's be real here. It is Geno Smith. So when we look at the schedule down the... Man, I forgot to put all my lights on right now. I'm about to go do that. Boom. Boom. That's dead. He dead. Why are all these dead? What is this? What is, I can't work like this. He's not dead. Fuck it. We ball. So we look at the last three weeks of the season. Uh, they play against San Francisco in week 15. This is the league's number one pass defense right now by most metrics. And they play against Kansas City, who's allowing 6.2 yards per attempt. They're eighth in the NFL. And the New York Jets, who are a sneaky good defense this year, okay? All three of those teams are ranked inside of PFF's top 12 graded pass defenses. So none of them are easy matchups, and they're still Seattle. They're still Geno Smith. They're still not running a ton of plays, okay? So I'm more selling on the longevity of the Seattle offense and selling the fact that I don't think they're going to be good for the entire season. And now is like the perfect time to sell these players in this offense because they're coming off of two monster games after three pretty disappointing games in the beginning of the season, okay? So DK Metcalf is the first sell I'm going to look at. I'm going to buy this wide receiver, though. Mr. Christopher Godwin, all right? Christopher Godwin is really close to being the guy that we've come to know him to be on the football field. He's really close to being back to where he was prior to this ACL injury. In a few weeks, he will be that guy, right? In the two weeks he's been back on the field since the hamstring injury, right? He had the ACL tear, hamstring injury, weeks two, three. Since he's been back, 16 targets in two games, 13 catches, all right? Uh, in week 16 and 17, they play against the Cardinals and the Panthers. That is your fantasy football playoffs right there against two of the worst defenses in the NFL, the Cardinals and the Panthers. Chris Godwin is, when he's in the lineup, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers throw the ball at a very, very high rate. Brady feels comfortable because he has a real underneath secure blanket, and we're going to see a ton of games where Godwin's 9 for 90 in a touchdown, 8 for 70 in a touchdown, you know, 11 for 140. Like, those are the games that we're going to start seeing from Chris Godwin as he gets healthier and more explosive. So you're buying Chris Godwin right now. And then you're selling these two pairs of running backs. There are two offenses that have just miserable end of the season, last month of the season schedule. Okay. The first up is the Packers running back group. Okay. And we're probably going to have to wait for AJ Dillon to have a big game if we want to sell him, but they play the Jets. They're at home this week, seven point favorites. So maybe this is the, uh, the game they get more involved. We, we heard Matt LaFleur come out and say that we need to get them a little bit more involved. So maybe they change the game plan a little bit and Dillon 
does Dylan things or what we wanted him to do this year. Here's the thing, the last four weeks of the season, okay? So you're saying, oh, I'm fighting to get in a playoff spot, right? I got Dylan, I got Aaron Jones, whatever. Uh, week 14 hits. You're a week away from the playoffs. Big game. We need to win. They have a bye. Week 15, they're playing the Ram. Week 16, they're at Miami. Week 17, they're against Minnesota. PFF grades every defense. And they grade their run defense, their pass defense, their coverage, whatever. Per PFF's grades, those are literally the top three run defenses in the NFL right now. The Rams, the Dolphins, and the Vikings. All right? So you get a bye when you need the player the most, and then three very tough ground games. We saw them play week one. Neither him or Aaron Jones, Dylan or Aaron Jones, went above 50 rushing yards in week one against Minnesota. It's not a good matchup. It's not a good schedule. It's a really tough end of the season, last month of the season. Um, so the Green Bay Packers are a running back group that I would keep a really, really close eye on right now because they haven't performed great up to this point in the season. Jones has had his explosion games. Dylan really hasn't. And the last month is a, a schedule that you probably want to get out of. Same thing with the Dallas Cowboys running backs, man. And it, I mean, it's not like either of them have a ton of value right now or are overvalued to the point that you could really get rid of them. But these players are more so that you know at the end of the season they have really tough schedules. So throughout the next, you know, three, four, five weeks, when they have their explosion games, you should be keeping that in mind and saying like, oh, he just went nuts. I know that he's going to be a tough uh, player to play when that championship game comes around, when that semifinals game comes around, when that week 14 game comes around, I need to win to get into the championship or get into the playoffs. Those are guys you got to keep top of mind that you should be moving. All right. Dallas Cowboys, the last five weeks of the season, Indianapolis, they play Houston, Jacksonville, Philadelphia, Tennessee. Now Houston's obviously like a cakewalk matchup. I'm sure Zeke will have 24 carries for 92 yards. Tony Pollard will make a, uh, will break a big play, but Indianapolis, number six uh, run defense in the NFL, Jacksonville, number eight, Philly's top 10, Tennessee is top five. Those are four out of five really, really tough ground matchups. So Zeke, I mean, you're not getting much for him right now, but if we can get a big game out of him, we're looking to move him. Tony Pollard just hasn't gotten the volume right now. Obviously, this team's going to be a little bit better when Dak gets back to uh, health and gets on the field, but I almost feel like that presents a better selling opportunity. When he comes back, like the run defenses aren't changing with these defenses. Indy, Jacksonville, Philadelphia, Tennessee are legit, legit front sevens, legit ground defenses that I don't want my running backs playing against when shit gets tough, okay? So those are, I don't know if I said four guys, six guys, whatever it is, a bunch of players I'm either looking looking to sell or buy in fantasy football at this point in the season now that we know a lot more about players teams depth charts defenses in particular and we know the schedule so we know who's playing who we know when the crucial part of the season is and when we need to be shipping dudes off all right want to get this out for y'all quickly make sure you hit the button that looks like this if you enjoyed subscribe to the channel if you are new and make sure you go sign up for prize picks because the steph curry Free Square is up there right now for a week. You'll never find more free money than this shit right here. And uh, our homie Noah, no more parties, will be doing his prize picks plays for Thursday Night Football as he always does tomorrow. I love you. I'm out of here.